Hey there, I'm making this video today because I'm going to force a brood break in this colony where the queen is in a cage and just left there to be attended to for multiple weeks on end. I'm doing this because this colony is very high with uh, mite load right now. I did a, a test yesterday and they're at 9%, which is just incredibly high. And we're in kind of this weird time with the weather where it's really, really nice today, but there's going to be rain and low temperatures for the next couple weeks. Also, this hive has a lot of brood, a lot of cap brood and a lot of brood about to be capped. So I can't use a treatment that is often used when brood isn't present. So I thought in my mind, the best way to go about this is to try integrated pest management through creating a brood break once there's less brood for the varroa to populate in, I can make some decisions from there. Either use a treatment like oxalic acid that I can use when there's less brood or no brood, or uh, maybe that's when I'll do a form of pro treatment when the weather's better. But I need to do something and I need to do it soon. I don't feel like I can afford to wait. And the reason why I'm waiting or this making this video is because I learned so much through beekeeping from listening through other people's processes and just kind of not so much what exactly they did, but how they made those decisions. So I wanted to create that for others today. Hopefully this helps to help you think through what you could be doing, what brings up questions for you, what maybe brings up ideas for things you want to do differently just based on what I say and do. So that's the reason why I'm making it. This colony, I'm going to break into it, but we have... We have four boxes. I don't know what's in this bottom box, so we're gonna find out. This might also be an opportunity to reduce their space if this bottom box is empty. But we do have two boxes of brood and a box of some stores. The brood pattern is really crappy. It's very, very sparse. You know, hallmark of those those high mite loads. And um, they're, the population is large now, but they will be dwindling. How I'm gonna go about it is I'm gonna do a full inspection with the mission of finding the queen. So I'm not so much looking at things, I did that yesterday, but today I wanna find the queen and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cage her. So I have a Jay-Z BZ cage here, the queen's going to go in it and then I'm gonna cap it up. This is gonna go in the middle of the brood area. I'm gonna stick her in there for about three weeks. That's gonna be enough time for the worker brood to hatch out. Um, there might be some drone brood left, but I'll see. Maybe maybe I'll keep her cage for 25 days to let the, the drone brood catch out. I don't know yet. I'll follow up. Uh, but how I'm going to do that is I'm going to find her and I'm going to use some kind of device to catch her and then put her in this cage. So that device might be my hands. It might be one of these little um, pipes where I put this on top of her and then close it up. And then once I have her where I want her, I'm going to put her in here and either blow lightly or just let her crawl into the cage. Um, my technique will be make it nice and dark because you're willing to make this light and make this dark in my hand so that she's wanna, going to want to crawl into the small space, or sorry, the darker space, or I'm going to cage her and then get her in there. So I'm gonna do whatever works, but these are things that often work for me. So I'm just showing you how I go about it. And maybe, uh, if I can find my pen, I just lost it, doggone it. Maybe that's a sign of it. Well, I was gonna see if maybe I can mark her. I don't like to mark my queens, but I do like to get the experience when I feel like I'm in a position of I really have nothing to lose. So um, I'll try a marker with the pen. I just found it. It's not the year's color, but I don't care. I just wanna have the experience of marking her. So yeah, I, I'm gonna go about that and I'm gonna start from the, I'm gonna take off all the boxes and I'm gonna start looking from the bottom box and if I don't find her there, I'm gonna add a box and then look in there. If I started from the top and worked my way down in this queen hunt, it might force all the bees and the queen down to the bottom box. box. And then when I get to that bottom box, it's just gonna be a zoo. There's just gonna be too many bees, too much activity because they've all kind of forced themselves to the bottom with my inspection, with my spoke, my smoke, and that's just gonna be too much. So I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna add boxes back as I can't find her. And I'm going to show you what I do and we're gonna figure it out together. Okie doke.
Okay, so we're in the bottom box right now. Uh, I smoked them to let them kind of calm them a little bit. I use receiving blankets to put over the colony just to keep them calm and keep them warm uh, and just covered. I find it helps and I'll be moving it back. I'm going to dive in and I'm going to be looking one, you know, what do things look like, but where's the queen? And then also just to see if I need to remove this box. If it's empty, I'm just gonna take it out. The reason for taking it out is it's gonna give them more condensed space. If I did do an oxalic acid treatment, having less space is better because it's gonna reach more bees. Um, this colony isn't gonna be expanding if I have the queen caged. So um, smaller is better right now. Okay, so I've checked this whole entire box. Uh, there's nothing in it. There's no brew. There's no stores whatsoever. It's just empty comb. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take off this box all together and put it to the side. I'm gonna freeze these frames so that any mites that might be in there will die and I'll um, freeze them for at least 24 hours and then I'll be able to reuse them for another hive. That's just gonna condense the space. Here we go, we got her. So um, here we have our queen. We have her right here. Her name is Grandma. She is a third generation from my favorite queen, the blue queen. Thus Grandma, so we have her right here. So I have her marked right here in the cage. She can't get out, but I'm gonna use this because I have plenty of these and this is easy to hang. Bees won't, able, won't be able to crawl in here, but they'll be able to, um, to feed her and tend to her through these little cracks. And this cap um, will allow me to place it over the top bars. So we're gonna do that. Okay. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> she's in the cage. Um, she's marked. And so what I'm going to do is put these ladies back in the colony and put her in between the brood area so that the bees can keep her warm, um, can keep tending her to her so that she can stay healthy and alive, but not lay anymore. And again, once I have some time that has passed, all this brood is going to hatch out. Like all, <sighs> here we go. All of this capped brood right here. Um, that's going to emerge. The mites are going to emerge with it. And then I'll be able to treat it with whatever is most appropriate based on that time, based on that weather, based on what I decide I want to do as a beekeeper to eliminate the mites that are on the bees, not underneath the capped brood. And I will let the queen go and then it will be a nice, clean, mite-free colony to repopulate for this spring increase. Um, so that's what we're gonna do. Awesome. So there we have our queen in there. We've already got all these bees tending to her and making sure she's happy. So I'm gonna leave her in here for a while and um, I will check back when the broodless period is complete, if not earlier, just to check on her and um, I'll just make a follow-up video with what's going on from there. So thank you for watching. Thanks for thinking through this stuff with me. And hopefully this helps with some of your own decisions with how you want to uh, reduce mites in your colonies. Enjoy.